she made her childhood dream of being a news presenter a reality, becoming one of the most recognized and respected women in Sri Lanka's television and radio industry, where she became one of the first permanent TV newsreaders on state television. She has another career as a singer and entertainer that has brought her equal success, winning her awards and seeing her perform at international level. ETV Power Women proudly presents Noeline Hunter. Hi, and welcome to ETV Power Women. Uh, well, you've heard the introduction to our next guest, who actually needs no introduction. Um, being a pioneer in entertainment and television, I think, um, you know, from its inception really in Sri Lanka. Yes, um, the inception of television in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Near, the near inception, <laughs> <laughs> because television began in 1979 and I joined the medium in uh, 1980. Right, so well, yeah. yeah. So Anyway, I, I, I must first tell you that I'm really happy to be on your show. Thank um, you. I'm honored to be invited to uh, be uh, to participate on Thank Power you. Women. I, well, I think I think really the, the honor is really all ours. <laughs> but no, you tell me a little bit about how you got into presenting. I mean, I understand that you had quite a dramatic entry into the world of sort of you know news reading. Yes, and I, I think I'll start from the very beginning okay. because actually. Uh, Getting into television work came as a part of being a radio announcer. Right. I was a radio announcer, um, I think I joined in 1969. Yeah. And so I was a radio announcer and that's how I got the inroad into television. Right. Okay. Um, so at the very beginning when, when television was going to be introduced to Sri Lanka, they had screen tests with radio announcers okay. to see who would be okay for yeah. television. So that's how I really got, got into, into the medium. Uh, but of course, as you said, I did have a dramatic entry <laughs> um, because um, the first day that I was going for my screen test, um, we were supposed to be having the screen test at the government film unit, which is on Paul Hengoda Road. Right. Um, when I got there, they had changed the venue without okay. being able to inform everyone. Right. So you were kind and of so I had to go to SLBC. And you know, in that time, it was in 1980, early yeah. 1980. There weren't many taxis around, <laughs> the Morris Miners. Uh, so, um, well, I thought I really have to go for the screen test. Yeah. So I walked out of uh, Polhengoda, the government film unit, and I was walking down Polhengoda Road. Yeah. When uh, an old friend of mine, I mean, old friend means he, he, was, uh, um, he was some person who worked at, uh, at the government film unit. Yeah. And uh, he asked me whether he could give me a ride on his really ancient motorbike okay <laughs> uh, and uh, he was an old gentleman and I, well I thought I really have to get there on yeah. time so I needed to go at least to the Narahem Peter Junction to get a taxi to go to SLBC yeah. so I uh, got on his bike I was in sari because I needed to wear sari right, for, for the your, uh, yeah. screen test and um, when we were halfway down that road you know the bridge on Paul Hengoda Road yeah I, I just found that the earth was moving up towards me. Oh my God. I just fell off the bike oh my because my sari potter <laughs> got entangled on the wheel <laughs> and I just got off. I was injured. My face was injured slightly, oh my, my foot. Goodness. And my sari and underskirt were in shreds. Oh no. Yeah, literally. Oh. And so, uh, well, I, I didn't know what I could do. But yeah. then, fortunately, there was a taxi just coming behind there. I, I got into the taxi and I told this guy, it's all right, don't worry. And my parents live in uh, Narahim, lived in yeah. Narahim, so I went there and my mother attended to my wounds and she said, well, why, you know, you can't go like this. I said, no, I really want to get there. <laughs> so I wore one of her saris and, and went for the screen test. And that's how I got on TV. My goodness. <laughs> so I, I think... Uh, you were definitely you know, destined then. Yeah, for and this, also, I, mean. uh, that's, uh, I think if you have a goal, yeah. you need to get... No matter do, what. Yeah, do just whatever do it. You, it takes to get there, yeah. Wow, that <laughs> is an incredible story. And I mean, your sort of career, which is, you know, still very, very, you're very prominent within the industry. I mean, it's, it's had that kind of, you know, very interesting sort of aspect to it. I mean, you've interviewed some incredible people. 
uh, throughout yeah. your career, you've done some amazing things. You've received countless number of awards. I mean, how does it feel to be Noelin Hunter today? I mean, what's mm. that like? Well, it feels good, <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm humbled by the fact that I've been brought to this place and I believe yeah. that it's all due to God's blessing on my yes. life. And, um, well, earlier I yeah. used to think, maybe about 10 years ago, I used to think, this is all mine. Yeah. This is, you know, this is what lots of people, when they get to a certain point, they yeah. think, okay, I've done this, right. I've achieved this, uh, this is all my talent. Right. But then I came to realize that I would be nowhere if God hadn't taken hold of my life. And this is when, when I actually uh, turned to the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ and, uh, as my personal savior. And that, that's how things really uh, got into place for me. Well, I kind of sort of touched on it earlier. Like I was saying, throughout your career, you've met these incredible people. I mean, do you have a personal favorite, you know, someone that you've interviewed and Well, I've, uh, I've had the opportunity of interviewing um, several heads of state, yeah. um, including Rajiv Gandhi, the late Rajiv Which Gandhi, Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady, oh. um, David Longy, uh, that's the New Zealand yeah. Prime Minister at the time, Bob Hawke, also the, uh, the Australian Prime Minister, Brian Mulroney, um, Mahathir Mohammed, <laughs> Hussein Mohammed Ershad. So there were lots of leaders of yeah. that time that I, I interviewed. interviewed. And I, I believe that um, Rajiv Gandhi was the Same most, uh, well, um, the, the uh, leader that really had an impact on oh, me when, yeah. when I interviewed him. Because I interviewed him on two occasions, once yeah. at the Commonwealth Heads of Government okay. uh, meeting that yeah. was in Vancouver. And uh, then again in India, in New Delhi, in his uh, prime minister's yeah. office. And um, I thought he was, he's such a charismatic man. Yeah. He, he walks into a room and he lights he up. It. He, he just <laughs> takes over. You know? he, he was such, such a charismatic a man. He, he, was, he was a real personality. And I really enjoyed talking with him and interviewing him. Uh, I first interviewed him in Vancouver, yeah. as I said, in Canada. And then when I went to uh, the Prime Minister's office, yeah. we set up cameras and got, took our places and we were waiting for him. Yeah. He walked in and as he saw me, he said, you spoke with me in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought, okay. <laughs> but, you know, he, uh, it's, that, yeah. he, he thinks about the little things. I believe yeah. his PR guy told him that you've been interviewed by this person before. Yeah. Uh, but he made it a point to, to make me of, feel at ease. Yeah, to so, yes, he, he gave that personal touch to the whole interview. And I mean, well, how sort of what's it like? I mean, interviewing a head of state, head of country is just it must be incredibly nerve wracking. I mean, how do you sort? How did you kind of prepare for these interviews, and what was your first one like? I mean, yes, actually, uh, well, uh, when when you do an interview, you, you have, have to yeah. do some research on the person yeah. and the work he's doing. So I did all of that, yeah. and um, <laughs> I, I just did it. <laughs> Were you quite nervous the first time? Yes, yes. Yeah. I think. Um, I am nervous when I have to do anything, right? Uh, because it's important to be a little nervous. Yeah. It's only then that you're really alert. Yeah. If you are confident, overconfident, then it shows. Yeah. And I think it's better to be a little nervous than so be <laughs> to be overconfident, over, <laughs> uh, yes. And also, as I uh, always tell my students, this is something I read, actually. Uh -huh. We always have butterflies in our stomach. Yeah. But when we do have butterflies in our stomach, it's best to teach them to fly in formation. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's the first time I've heard it. I quite like it. I mean, I've read it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. You, know, you have to feel nervous, but you can try always, to control that yeah. to be it. beneficial I mean, to you. Your, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And learning, what was it like? I mean, you know, when you joined television, you were the first female news presenter. And I, mean, uh, I think there was one before me, right. but the thing is that, see, when you get into television, you mm. have to uh, do what it takes right. to stay there. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, and I suppose people fall by down the the, by the wayside uh, because sometimes they get there for the wrong reason, right. reasons. Uh, yeah. For example, um, you know, at the time when television began in Sri Lanka, they were trying out actresses. I'm not saying that actresses are not good. I mean, they're yeah. fantastic yeah. in their, their field. Yeah. But then when they come into a different medium, 
perhaps they can't uh, they, they can't do it quite yeah. that well yeah. uh, so um, you know they were taking all all the wrong people I think at right. the beginning because they just took people for their looks okay at the very beginning <laughs> and uh, see television is a medium you can look good but you've also got to have substance. yeah you, you've <laughs> got to have the telegenic yeah. quality which is important. You don't have to be beautiful, yeah. but you have to do your job well. <laughs> and also, uh, being in television, you need to be absolutely committed. Right. As, as you probably <laughs> know, you, ha you have to be committed because uh, it takes a lot of patience, yeah. it takes a lot of your time, um, and you are there because you have a passion for it, yeah. and you can stay there because of it. Uh, if you just get, you know, you, you come into television with, with the idea that, well, I want to be seen yeah. by people. That, that doesn't that, work. That's, that doesn't work at all. <laughs> well, that's a good point for us to take a quick break on. Um, so don't go anywhere. We've got the lovely and incredibly fascinating Nolene Hunter back after the short break. So we'll see you soon. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh, we're here with the lovely Noelin Hunter. I'm a little bit awestruck, actually, since <laughs> um, I'm sure all of you at home uh, know her and are very familiar with a lot of her work. Um, Noelin, I wanted to ask you, actually, because when you were doing your news presenting, it was a rather difficult period for the country, and I know you had a lot of harrowing experiences during that time as well. Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. Um, well, let, let me first begin with the studio. Yeah. There was a time, um, it was just, well, one night when I was presenting the news. You know, uh, when, you, when you do anything live, yeah. when you present a program live, and the news was live at the time, um, it is a little difficult because you have to really concentrate. You have yeah. to be very alert. And you also need, if you're a presenter who does live programs, you yeah. need to have nerves of steel. And this was really Can proved to me because one day when I was in the studio one night yeah. doing the uh, Rupa Mahani news, yeah. um, generally the studio doors, they're very heavy. Yeah. Nobody opens them when you're on live unless the producer sends someone in. Yeah. And then I would know about it beforehand. Yeah. But um, suddenly when I was on camera, I didn't have the, the video clips to save me, I was on camera. Yeah. Uh, and uh, suddenly the doors open okay. and I could see with the corners of my mm. eye, uh, I could see about 10 or 15 people walking in and they were having guns. Oh my goodness. Soldiers. Uh. And they came and lined the two sides of the studio. They were against yeah. the wall. And now I'm on camera. Thinking, what is going on? Yeah, <laughs> I'm wondering what, what, what's happening. Yeah. And I know there's, you know, something really big is going to yeah. happen and I, I was worried but then the, the thing is when you are a presenter You've got uh, you need as I said you need nerves of steel you can't indicate to your viewer that there's anything amiss in the studio yeah so even in this instance I had to keep a straight face I had to inform my viewer of what was happening whatever the news item was yeah. and inside me I knew there was you know there was going to be a big problem uh, oh but and, and the producer couldn't communicate with me either because I didn't have an earpiece. Oh, right. At the okay. time, we yeah. didn't have earpieces, yeah. right? Uh, so, um, well, I just went ahead, but knowing that there is something, something wrong. wrong. Yeah. And then as soon as they were able to, they cut to a visual. Yeah. They took me off camera, cut to a visual. And then the producer came running in. He said, don't worry, there's been a threat a bomb threat, so we've sent the soldiers into the studio. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so that, Don't that worry. was even, that was even worse. <laughs> so I thought, okay, any minute now, in Boom. front of the entire Sri Lankan public, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to explode. Oh but my then gosh. this is the kind of thing you know, that yeah. happens sometimes when you're, in this, you know, when you're doing uh, news, yeah. or when you're doing anything on TV. Life. There were lots of other instances like that. But of course, a funny thing is that one day, um, this is in a very lighter vein. Uh -huh. uh, this was not in the studio, in, in a live situation. Right. I was recording a program. This was in another uh, television station. They are um, uh, located closer to a marsh, actually. Okay. And the studio is next to the set department, and the set department opens into the marsh. Okay. So I was there recording the program. I did one of the clips. Yeah. And then while I was doing the clip, I could see something again in the studio with the corner of my <laughs> eye. <laughs> And uh, I knew this was, you know, th this was not really good, but I, I just had to keep a straight face and do my uh, introduction. Yeah. 
And then when the introduction was over, we stopped and I looked around and there was a Kabra Goya. Oh my a, goodness. A water monitor in the studio. <laughs> And but that, that is, yeah, 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 this is the thing. And then, then, <laughs> then they got rid of the guy and we continued with the recording. <laughs> so there have been little funny instances, instances. and incidents in my life. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, some serious things like the soldiers coming yeah. into the studio. Um, it's right. been harrowing. And also there was a time, um, this was in the late 80s, when, yeah. when the JVP was an extremist group yeah. and, you know, they were targeting Not mainstream people. mainstream politicians. Yes. Sort of politicians uh, so... Um, we were also under threat. I was under threat as well. Yeah. And uh, I think my husband had a briefcase full of threatening letters from them. Um, and and they, they had said, you know, we know exactly what she's doing and we need her to leave, leave uh, television work because yeah. they, they wanted to disrupt everything. Yeah. So um, I didn't want to give up TV because, I mean, I loved it. And this, this is your career. This, yeah, you this is the thing. And I, I, this is something I worked for. Yeah. And I really loved doing television news. I'll tell yeah. you how I really got an interest in, in broadcasting. But first, let me continue the story. So yeah. I had so many threats uh, from, right. from the JVP. And uh, my life was under threat. Yeah. So, and I had a very young family. My two children were very young. Yeah. My son was eight and my daughter was, my son was, yes eight and my daughter was two years old right so. and uh, we had a drill in the car because uh, every time we I took them out somewhere I would tell them if I give you a signal yeah. you need to get under the seats my goodness you know the, it was That's as terrifying. bad as that yeah, yeah it, it, it was nerve-wracking yeah. but this was something they were used to okay. doing <laughs> right but one day um, I drove out of my lane mm. but I was always alert because I knew I of had this, this yeah. real threat uh, I drove out of my lane and I saw this guy on a bike. Yeah. He was wearing a big jerkin. Okay. And this is how they used to come and shoot people through the glass, through the window. Oh. You know, when they, they were driving, yeah. they, come, uh, they, they used to come on big bikes, yeah. hide their gun inside, inside, and that, that's yeah. it. Uh, so I, I was a little shaken, but anyway, I took my car out and this guy started his bike Following. and he followed me. Uh, when I came to... Uh, you know, the kind of the junction, the roundabout, I indicate, I wanted to check whether he was actually following me. Yeah. So I indicated that I was turning left when I was actually going right. I indicated left, he indicated left. left. And I turned right, he turned right. So oh, I thought, okay, no, Ali, this is it. <sighs> so uh, I went down that main, main road and then I got to the traffic lights and the traffic lights were red. So I had to stop and I was wondering now what's going to happen, but I knew he's not going to do anything at that front, point yeah. because he couldn't move. Yeah. Um, he just stopped his bike a little behind me and then there was another bike that came and stopped by my window and uh, I knew it was a police guy because he, you at know, at that thing. time they had this big white bike, right. they just got the big white, white yeah. bikes. And so I put my shutter down and said, excuse me, he didn't hear me, but the guy at the back heard me and, and I could see he was really jittery, you know, yeah. he was, he couldn't get away because there were other cars there. Yeah. So then um, the policeman finally heard me and he yeah. turned on and he said, ah, oh, uh, me, Mrs. Hunter, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then I told him, me, my, Mama Hitani, me, me, I, I yeah. just said the man behind me following is me. following yeah. me. And they knew that there were threats to people on television yeah. and, pe you know, people in, in the limelight. So what he did is he said, don't worry. He put his bike across the road like that. Okay. So this man couldn't go. The lights turned green and I'm I fled. Right. My goodness. Yeah, so there were experiences like yeah. that. But finally, I really had to give up TV uh, work yeah. during that time. And I had to leave the country because my, you know, it was not worth it to lose For my family, family and yeah. myself, you know. So... I just uh, went, left Sri Lanka and I went to Germany for about four or five months, came back and I didn't do any TV work for about a year. And then I joined ITN. I mean, but I was so sad to leave uh, Rukmani. Yeah, Mahani, having you know? worked and, you know, yeah. so Be hard. And I, I told you, I'm going to tell you how I got this yes, interest. Absolutely. I was um, maybe about seven years old, uh -huh. but I used to always listen to the radio and very particularly the news. Okay. And there was this... Uh, Female, uh, tele female radio announcer, news announcer. Yeah. Uh, she's, she was well known at the time and she was very good. Yeah. Uh, I wonder whether you've heard of her. Her name is uh, Merle Williams. Okay, so she was very, very well known and she yeah. used to read really well. Um, so uh, I used to listen to her and she said, here's the news read by and you know. So once she finishes the news, I take a newspaper and say, here's the news read by Noelle Mendes. <laughs> so this is how I started. I, I really wanted to be a news yeah. presenter. 
on radio wow. first because we didn't have TV, TV but then yeah. uh, I was blessed with the chance to get on TV as a news presenter. Amazing. <laughs> That's a wonderful story. Noreen, I know that also your singing career sort of ran parallel to your career in TV That's well. right, yes. How did you manage to kind of do both simultaneously? I mean, that must have been quite mm. difficult. At the very beginning of my TV career, yeah. Actually, I was, doing, um, I was doing singing at that time, and uh, I was singing at various uh, five-star hotels. Yeah. And there were ads, you know, yeah. with, with my picture yeah. appearing in the newspapers, advertising my performance at various places. Yeah. And I remember at the time, um, you know, in Sri Lanka, you find people who aren't very happy about people progressing. Right, okay, yes. So, <laughs> Uh, my, I think we've my all chairman, had our fair share of yeah, that. yes. So my chairman, um, he was Mr. M. J. Pereira, and he was the first chairman of television of of Rupa Mahini, yeah. and he was uh, someone who, you know, he knew exactly what he wanted, and he yeah. also um, he didn't give in to criticism like that unless yeah. it was absolutely you know constructive. Yeah. So there were people who used to cut these pictures off the newspapers and send it to him and say. Uh, Can you have a singer presenting the news? Oh my goodness, how pathetic. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, but he had a vision and yeah. he knew, uh, probably he knew my potential. Yeah. But he used to call me and say, look, you've got a letter, another letter. Uh, and then he used to throw yeah. it into the waste paper basket. Uh, so it was because of people like that that I'm here today. Yeah. And I, I'm very <laughs> thankful to Mr. MJ Pereira for that. Wonderful, excellent. Well, I think we're going to take another little break. Okay. Um, but for all of you at home, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with more from the fabulous Noeline Hunter. So we'll see you after this break. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, I've been having an incredibly interesting uh, chat with Nolene Hunter. Um, Nolene, I just wanted to touch a little bit more on your musical career, because I know your singing has taken you all over the world, really. Mm -hmm. You've sort of traveled and, you know, performed all over the, uh, all over the world. Tell us a little bit about that. Actually, um, I think I was really interested, as I told you at the beginning, yeah. I was very interested in being a radio presenter, yeah. doing news presentation. Uh, music came accidentally, okay. but around the same time, which yeah. is parallel to my uh, television career. But I think music, I, I did music before right. getting on you, TV. You always had a passion for it. Yes. Uh, what happened is, uh, at home, I used to sing uh -huh. all the time. And uh, I had an uncle who was uh, a recordist, a recording right. engineer. He's an award-winning recording engineer, actually. Yeah. He passed away some years ago. Uh, but um, he was very interested in, you know, because he, he heard me sing, and yeah. I used to take a broomstick and okay. uh, pretend it's a yeah. mic stand and sing into the <laughs> broomstick. Uh, so this is how, uh, you know, I, I got interested in, in music. Yeah. So one day he said, why don't you come and record something? I'll record you, and we'll yeah. see how it is. And so I went and recorded, and he said, it, it sounds good. And he said, well, your recording voice is good and all that. And that was OK. Then I had another uncle who was also, you know, he used to sing, yeah. uh, doing a bit of part-time singing. And he said he knows someone who might be able to help me. Okay. And at the time, they had this uh, program, uh, an amateur program, yeah. a competition called Elasto's Moving Designs. Okay. And uh, he said, well, I'll take you for an audition. And if they like you, they'll put you on the competition for the yeah. contest. So he took me there. And there I met Sri Lanka's impresario. Uh -huh. And actually, he's helped so many artists get where they are. Yeah. Malcolm Andre. OK. OK. So I, I met him there. And uh, he was so nice and so kind and loving. Yeah. And then he, and I was only about 13 years old. OK, so. And then, yeah. Yes. And then I, I did this song for the audition yeah. with one of Sri Lanka's really famous um, pianist at yeah. the time, Patrick Nelson, and he okay. played the song. Uh, I remember the song I did, it was Yesterday. Okay, what a beautiful and, uh, song. Yeah, I, uh -huh. I sang it and they, and I saw them just, you know, looking at each other and I thought, okay, that's it, <laughs> I have to go back home. Then he came, uh, Malcolm came up yeah. to me and said, Norlin, do you, he used to call me Darling. Darling, do you really want to get into the competition? I said, yes. Yeah. yeah. 
to then he said no because we decided to put you as a guest artist on the show <laughs> and i was so happy so that's how i really began my music career. My not in a competition but, but singing as a guest as, artist wow. on on the show wow that's incredible <laughs> and from then on he he put me on you know at various shows at the candy mm. lake club because all his artists used to sing at the candy lake club okay. and from there i just you know it my took, music career took a began life of its own. yes and then my uncle got me to do this recording of the city of colombo which i recorded right. at uh, 17 wow. and that became a very popular song it's yeah. even popular up to today, today yeah. and um, so that's how that's i really incredible. began my music career but from then on i had my own bands yeah. i i traveled abroad with the spitfires yeah spitfires yeah. were a very very popular group at the time and yeah. uh, so i joined the spitfires and we went abroad we did a lot of uh, we performed at a lot of nightclubs and a lot of hotels yeah. abroad uh, we visited so many countries and that must have been a fascinating experience it itself. was it was very interesting yeah. uh, we also performed i think one of my best places i mean my favorite yeah. performing places was the nile hilton in cairo oh wow yes uh, this was by the river nile yeah. very close to the cairo museum and i love cairo i think yes, it's amazing yes it is it's wonderful <laughs> uh, so we used to visit the cairo museum very often and of course okay. go to the uh, visit the pyramids yeah. as well which is very close uh. um so music you know music was really fantastic at the time yeah. and we we used to have a great time i had a great time touring with yeah. the spitfires and i've sung with some of sri lanka's re- best musicians yeah. like for instance donald senivaratna who's who's a legend right he passed away some years ago yeah. uh, he's a legend he was a bassist mohan sabaratnam the yeah. drummer uh, Ra- raj senivaratna of course you must have heard of him yes. he was yeah. from savage he was the at one time he was the leader of the spitfires then raja jalaldin i also sang with maxi rosario and priyanka oh, jalaldin some of the top singers yeah. in sri lanka so uh, it was really wonderful it, it was a great experience we we had a good time and so with all of this happening how on earth in the world did you find time to have a family <laughs> i know everybody asked me that and I, i think at this stage of my life when i look back yeah. uh, that is one of my regrets right i think i didn't spend enough time with my family right um, if i had my life all over again i think i You'd would i would spend that. a little little more time with them with my children yeah. because uh, it's important to be with them at every stage of, of their that. lives yeah. and that is something that i didn't do enough of right. and that's a regret i have mm-hmm. uh, but uh, i did try to find as much time yeah. as i could uh, i think i was more concentrated on my career which which is wrong Just, i know yeah <laughs> but i mean you know that's fair enough as well <laughs> but So now you tell us a bit about your two kids. My two kids <laughs> who are now <laughs> grown up yeah, actually but grown up. probably Ryan would kill me if you heard me calling yes. him a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan? Yes, he he was a he's a wonderful he's a wonderful child. Yeah. He's uh, he's not a child anymore. <laughs> Still he's a wonderful man. Yeah. He's very loving and very lovable. He's I think he manages to uh, he he just people are drawn to him. Yeah. He has a charm about him. About he has him, that yeah. personality and uh, he's a very loving son and I I really adore him. Oh. And my daughter Jamie, yeah. we are very close. She's now in Australia. She studies she was studying there. She's yeah. just graduated and she's working there in Aus- in Melbourne. Um so I I'm uh, Ma- Ryan is married and yes. he has two kids. Yeah. And um so now my life is mainly you know when i'm not working yeah. it's with my grandchildren and okay. i adore them sarah and oh, james wow. is, <laughs> sarah is 3 and james is 1 and a half oh wonderful so yes. they must keep you really busy yes. as well how <laughs> uh-huh. and i mean what do you do to relax i mean you know just that kind of take a break from all of us how do you kind i of just relax? like to read i yeah. love reading and that's something i think that's helped me in my career as well yeah. so from my young days i used to read I have a little anecdote to tell you about my okay, reading. Okay, good. Please uh, do. See, when I read a book, I get yeah. so engrossed in it. Okay. Everything else fades. <laughs> I I don't know what is happening around me. So one day, uh, I was about 10 years old, I think, yeah. and my favorite reading place was under this um 
Atta tree. Okay. The Atta tree, the yeah. um, uh, custard apple yeah. tree. And this was a very old tree, so we, we had, you know, it was a tree that had a lot of roots right. uh, on the surface. So I used to sit on the roots and read, okay. and that was my favorite place. Uh, one day when I was reading, um, our domestic, yeah. she swept the garden, swept all the leaves, and she took it away from me, yeah. and she lit the fire. Okay. And then I suddenly heard a noise and I, I saw my mum running towards yeah. me. My dress had caught fire and I was not oh aware of it. Oh my Because I was so engrossed <laughs> in my book. <laughs> so this is, this is how much, you know, I, I, I think I, when I get into something, I really, really get do. into yeah. it. That's just no yes. holds barred kind of thing. Yes. Oh my God. No half measures. <laughs> Well, that's quite interesting. I also wanted to ask you, Nolan, um, about the program that you do at the moment, which mm -hmm. is broadcast in Australia. It's Channel 31, right? That's right, yes. How did that sort of happen? Uh, we uh, record the program at yeah. Swarnavahini. Right. Uh, and um, it is actually done through a new company under the EAP group called mm -hmm. News Now. Right. Uh, we record the program there. I gather all the news actually yeah. from the uh, Live at 8 news that we have. Mm -hmm. And we also do our own clips, depending on what is newsworthy. Yeah. And we record the program and upload it to Australia, to Melbourne. To Melbourne. And it's telecast there on Channel 31. Which is, which is amazing, because we've got such a huge community of, of Sri Lankans. Yes, yes, we there. do. And, and it's a very popular program. Because, yeah. uh, just recently, I, I uh, went to Australia once again, because we had uh, the Sri Lanka week there. Yeah. And I was comparing that. And I met so many people who watched the program. I have lots of emails from yeah. them and they, they really liked the program oh, uh, and it was so popular uh, if I should say so <laughs> it, it was nominated for an award this year oh Australia wide Fant award fantastic yes. right well we're going to take another little break um, but when we come back we've got what we like to call the confession can uh, where we've spoken to some of your colleagues and family and they've told us a little bit more about you um, I'm looking forward <laughs> to that good, good. it's all good I promise um, so don't go anywhere, we've got more uh, with Nolan Hunter. We'll see you after this short break. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, Nolene, actually, before we take a look at the confession cam, before we have a look at, uh, you know, what, what your friends and family... I'm waiting to see what they've said about me. <laughs> I, I know that this is something that you're very passionate about, and you've kind of expressed it quite often, saying that we need to have proper training for people coming into television. And I know that you're actually doing something about it. Now, would you just tell us a little bit? Uh, at present, I'm training the news presenters at Swarnabahini, and yeah. I'll to be training the other presenters as well, the continuity presenters. Yeah. But I've been doing quite a bit of training. Even when I was at uh, Rupa Mahini, I trained certain announcers when they first joined, right. uh, like Ravi John when he came in, okay. and um, Savitri, I think. Okay. Uh, then there was Faisal, Clifford wow. Richards, uh. people like that I've yeah. trained. Um, I think what is lacking now is yeah. that uh, most of the, the stations don't have trained presenters program, yeah. yes and another thing is that they, they don't look at each aspect of presentation yeah. uh, see presentation is not just getting in front of the camera and reading to the camera mm. uh, it is now more a conversational style yeah. uh, if you watch CNN and BBC you'll find that yeah. uh, people don't read the news they present they actually, it they, yeah. they tell you the news yeah. They it's, have a it's, kind of, nothing, it's a conversational yeah, style. And yeah. another thing that I'm very particular about is pronunciation. Okay, yeah. uh, English <laughs> pronunciation because uh, I think that that is a really bad area yeah. in Sri Lanka. English, if you're an English yeah. presenter, you have to Speak present language, yeah. and pronounce correctly. Yeah. Right? So you don't say things like development yeah. or development. <laughs> uh, and another thing that they don't think about, when, when, when you talk of pronunciation, the difference yeah. between um, being a good presenter, yeah. I think, is when you really pronounce your words well. And pronunciation is not just sound, making the right sounds. Yeah. It is also thinking about syllabic stress. Right. Because the English well, language very, has yeah. something called... It, it, syllabic stress is very important because yeah. it could make the difference between uh, the meaning of a word, yeah. you know. Uh, so syllabic stress is important and this is something that some most presenters don't seem to know so I'm very concerned about that <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is probably one of the reasons that you have received 
a numerous, a countless number of awards, actually. I was reading through some of them. And, you know, it's incredible. You've won Woman of Achievement. You've won the JC's top list. Tell us, you know, tell us what your personal, if you have a personal favorite. <laughs> what right. It, what I, it I, is. Yeah, yes, as you said, I have received several awards yeah. from Including different organizations. This, this of all the awards, I mean, all of them were important because yeah. it was a recognition of yeah. my work. Uh, but I was really very happy and honored to yeah. uh, receive an award from a Singhala newspaper oh my goodness, uh, wow. for television work because uh, they wow, uh, gave me, this was called the Vanita Vitti Awards okay. and the Vanita Vitti newspaper recognized yeah. me as the leading television presenter of oh the my year. God, so I thought, wow, I'm doing English presentation yeah. and I, I get an award from the Singhala newspaper. That really, yeah. From, yes. So that was something that really, you know, I, I was quite impressed about that, that. They, they, they were able to give me that award. I was happy about that. Wonderful. <coughs> right, well, I think it's the time has come okay. <laughs> for us to take a look Let at the Let me keep my confession. fingers crossed. <laughs> it's all good. So we'll take a quick look at your confession cam. Okay. <laughs> well, I've known her, for, as you say, for many years. I have worked with her. First of all, she's a brilliant singer, incredible vocalist. And uh, unfortunately, she doesn't sing so very much at the moment. But uh, I have sung duets with her and uh, she has performed with me even abroad in many countries. Uh, absolutely super singer. Apart from that, she has many other talents. Like uh, she's an excellent announcer. And when it comes to radio and media, she's very, very talented. And uh, I learned so much from her about diction, pronunciation, and then how interviews are done and things like that. I learned a lot from her and uh, she, I would say, is like a complete woman. Uh, I'm not sure whether she can cook, but if she can cook, the, cook she would be absolutely all around. But in everything, when it comes to current affairs, you know, uh, then uh, dealing with other artists, organizing shows. In fact, I got together with her once and we did, uh, we did uh, something called the Talent Search, where we, we highlighted so many uh, new artists who are today singing professionally. Where all that is concerned, where the music scene, entertainment, everything is concerned, I think uh, if you think of an incredibly talented woman, I think that is Noeline. She's a very interesting personality and she has a very good knowledge of current affairs. I think she's been a news editor. So if there's anything about, well, from space travel to uh, what's happening in the media around the world or the latest thing on CNN, uh, you can be guaranteed that Noeline knows all about it. Well, everybody has heard of uh, the media personality that uh, Noelle Nante is, but uh, as a mom, uh, she's been a, a role model for me, actually, uh, when it comes uh, to my career. Uh, both my parents have. Both my parents were in the media, and that's how they actually met. Uh, and uh, I suppose it was uh, the given path for me, and uh, uh, her being in the media, has helped me in my career as well. Uh, she has been, uh, you know, when uh, she's uh, being a public person, I, I wouldn't expect a parent to be uh, present during uh, a lot of times during your childhood, but uh, she's made up for it uh, in the latter years. And she's uh, a fantastic grandmother to my uh, two children. Uh, she spends so much time with them and uh, now I think she's uh, uh, really uh, enjoying herself with my children. I'm very proud of her. I mean, she's done a fantastic uh, job when it comes, uh, uh, especially to, uh, for the English media sector. You know, there's, there are only a few people who are still spoken about uh, from the Rupa Mahini era uh, when it comes to pro proper news reading and uh, Things like that, and you know, in, uh, in my role now, um, also in media, it, it, it's it's a, it's very difficult to to keep to those ideals. Thank you, Ryan. That's that was so touching, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> very touching. Well, we've got to take another break, and okay. um, after that, I'm going to ask you what we like to call the dreaded ten. 
So a series of rapid questions, and I want the first answer. I hope answer. I'm, I give you the correct answers. <laughs> Any answer is correct. It's the first answer that pops into your okay. head. Okay. Yeah? So don't go anywhere. We're going to be back with Noeline and the dreaded 10 after this short break. So we'll see you soon. Welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, we've come to that sort of final stage of the show, Nolene, where I kind of put you on the spot. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you just a series of questions. Whatever comes into your head, just first answer that comes in. So, are, are, are you ready? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I am. Okay. Are you a news presenter who sings or a singer who presents the news? I think. I'm both. <laughs> what is the greatest thing that you can learn from your weaknesses? Uh, I think, um, well, it's important to be able to use your weaknesses and make them into strengths. What is the most difficult lesson that divorce teaches you? Uh, I think being a divorcee, sometimes when I look back, I, th I, I even think of the little things like going to the supermarket with the family. Yeah. I miss that, yeah. you know, taking the kids to the supermarket with my husband and, you know, it, it's a complete thing. Uh, so those are little things that I miss. But having said that, I, I also think it's important to be independent. Is it harder to say I love you or harder to say you don't? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Yes, I think it's harder to say I don't. Yeah. Because you, you can say I love you, but yeah. you know, when you, you can't look someone in the eye and say, I don't love you. <laughs> How many rings before you answer the phone? Three. Three. Where would you be if you hadn't discovered religion? I would be lost. Yeah. I think religion, I think coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. personally in my life has changed me a lot. Religion has really, you know, helped me and, and I actually got into that only about 10 years ago. So most of my career I've been the selfish, arrogant person and then it just changed, changed overnight. Why do you think God hasn't given us a cure for cancer? Mm. That's a tough one. <laughs> uh, I believe we, we have to go through certain um, well, sometimes you have to go through suffering yeah. and um, problems to really come to know God. I, I know it must be terrible to have, have cancer, yeah. uh, but if you really know God, you can actually go through situations and be able to face them. Do you love it? Do you love the sinner but hate the sin? Yeah, I suppose that that, 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 is, that is quite true, yes. We love the sinner but hate, hate the, the sin. sin. Yes. What song would you say characterizes you the best? I would choose the song because I like singing it. Okay. I would say the song from Cat's Memory. Okay. I love that song. What would you have done if you'd failed your audition as a news presenter? Okay, I think I would have been in the newspapers, yeah. still with the, media, with the media, because I actually, this is something I forgot to tell you, okay. I did start writing for the Daily Mirror right. way back when, when, you know, when they were at the Times building in okay. Fort. Uh, I was, a, you know, I was about 17 or 18 years old and I, I dabbled in reporting right. for a short while. Well, that was wonderful, um, Nolene, I think you had some really, really fabulous answers. Um, and unfortunately, we've come to the end of the show, so I've got to say goodbye to you. But it's been wonderful having you here. And thank you so much um, for coming on. It's been... Thank you, Minoli. <laughs> it's been a great pleasure uh, talking to you on Power Women. Great. And as I said at the beginning, it's been an honor, an <laughs> honor as well. <laughs> well. I think the honor and the pleasure actually has been completely been ours. It's been really great having you here. Thank um, you. So for all of you at home, uh, don't forget, we've got another guest coming in next week, so don't forget to tune in. Um, again, if you'd like to check our website for more details on the show and learn a little bit more about the people that we've interviewed, um, it's www.
www.etvpowerwomen.blogspot.com. Um, so don't forget to check that out. And uh, until next week, goodbye. Thanks. Thanks. I, I like it.